Lord Jesus, in this atmosphere, speak through your word. The service belongs to you. The people belong to you. This church belongs to you. This moment belongs to you. And so now, Lord, seven weeks of vision kicks off right now. And if it is my imagination alone, it has no power. But my imagination filtered through your Holy Spirit can change a region. So give me the boldness to declare what you've shown me. and Let me be unapologetic in it, in my expression. And then God, move in demonstration. Power in the Holy Ghost. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. I need somebody to give God one more praise before you take your seat. 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 We believe the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I interrupted offering. No preacher interrupts offering unless he believes God wants to do something else. I don't have a church yet. Pastor Aventer, pray for me because I'm, I'm getting ready to go somewhere. I asked the Holy Ghost to do something unprecedented in this service. And so I'm going to ask you to give me latitude to flow with the Holy Ghost. So that people leave here with miracles, that cancer leaves, that diseases leave, that demons leave. Families are turned around. Resources are released. Curses broken. Will anybody just roll with me? I just need a couple more. I feel the oil over here. Anybody over here need? Anybody in the balcony? I know y'all tired. You had to walk a long way. I love y'all. Pastor Todd said something during worship. He said, we are not, we're not here for any reason other than this, to get into the presence of God. We're not here for what is on our timeline and what is on our run of service. We are here to encounter the spirit of the living God. Other than that, we have wasted your time. It is my endeavor over the next seven weeks to line out and outline and declare the vision of Relentless Church. And I want you to hear my heart and I want you to receive it. And I want you to see if you line up with that vision because the purpose is not to draw a crowd. It's to build a committed core. For too long, we've had people sitting on the sidelines in entertainment mode, but I do not exist to entertain you. And this is not a concert. We are a church. And so we are going to function as a church. The word will be preached. We will meet the needs of those in our community that cannot do for themselves. And then we will see the demonstration of power in the Holy Ghost. Can I get an amen? amen. Vision. It is what I as a leader have been tasked with speaking and declaring and then you are going to be the hands and feet of Jesus along with me and my wife and our team. And we are going to watch God do things that have never been done. Not just here, but around the world. Not just here, but around the world. Ezekiel 37. Please go to Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. I'm reading from the New King James Version. How many people are excited about this vision series? There's nothing worse than attending a church and you don't know why. There's nothing worse than coming into a building and having a nice experience, but the experience doesn't change you nor motivate you to change. It would be a disservice to the Spirit of God to scintillate your emotions 
without giving you substance for your soul. Very quiet in this church. The purpose of vision is to help you and I to get on the same page. And if I speak what the Lord has given me to say, then you will know that you're in the right place or perhaps there's another place more suitable to your persona. I'm under no illusion that I'm not everybody's pastor, but I'm somebody's pastor. And every church that's open to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we should work together. There is nothing worse than an insecure pastor who wants to see other people fail so they can feel good about themselves. That's a devil. Ezekiel 37 says this, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. They weren't just regular dry. They was extra crispy dry. <laughs> they had been dead a long time. The bones weren't dry. They were yeah. up in the balcony. They were yeah. on the floor. They were yeah. online. They were y'all yeah. online, really? <laughs> Shout out to our relentless online family. We love you so much. We thank the Lord for your faithfulness. To be clear, there will be a moment where you will be able to sow, but I did not want you to sow until you could see. I wanted you to hear the vision because I need you to know what you're sowing into. Yes, I believe in faith, but I also believe in transparency. I'm trying, I, I'm trying. For too long, people have played manipulating games. Look over here while I do this over there. No, let me give you the vision, make it plain so you understand that you're not sowing into a man. You're sowing into the kingdom. I wish somebody would help me. Dry, and not just dry bones, very dry. And he said to me, son of man, he said to me, John, he said to me, Pastor, can these bones live? So I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Somebody say you shall live. Somebody needs to hear that so that spirit of depression that's been lingering in your family and messing with your mind and messing with your sleep and messing with your peace and messing with your hope and messing with your joy can go back to the pit of hell from where it came. I need you to say it with some power and with some authority because you don't know what people are going through next to you. Tell them, look them in the eye and say, you shall live. Now I need you to worship right there because somebody just got free from a spirit of suicide. No, we gonna praise right there, right there. God says, you shall live twice. When God repeats himself, it's not because he didn't hear himself the first time. Anytime God repeats himself, it is to ratify a covenant between heaven and earth. He's giving you two lives in one. He's giving your mortal body life, but then he's giving you spiritual life so that you can perpetuate a legacy that will outlast you, which means today he's giving double for your trouble. I need 16 people to hear what I just said. For every place of attack that you've gone through, 
in the last eight years, he's giving you 16 years worth of blessing. Yeah! Because he has to start something over. Eight is the new beginning. Yes, Watch this. And you didn't realize it because you've been fighting, you've been sowing, you've been serving. But the apostle, Apostle Jonathan, wave your hand real quick. Pastor Darius, where are you? Stand up, wave quickly. We were talking last night until about two in the morning. And he said, On the, in the seventh year, the land has to rest. And it's going to produce... And then it starts over. You don't know, because you've been sowing and like, I haven't seen anything. I need you to know, you should probably look over your shoulder because it's coming. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord will overtake you, which means it's tracking you down right now. You did not know it, but harvest came early this year. If I be a man of God, these words will not fall to the ground. There are people in this room that people have stolen your inheritance. And God is going to triple what they took. So you have enough for you, your children, and your children's children. Now, I need somebody to believe the word of God. And when I show you in the word, then you will know that it is the voice of the Lord. He said, you shall live twice. Natural life and a spiritual life that will outlast you. She already saw it. It ain't even time for offering. That's when you know... <laughs> I told you to hold it till the end. He says, you shall live and you will know that I am the Lord. God's about to resurrect the thing that you thought wasn't just dead, but it was so dead it could never get up. And he said, that's the only way you're going to know it was me. It ain't a man. It's not a husband, it's not a wife, it's not a spouse, it's not a boss, it's not a supervisor. No one will be able to get the credit for what God is about to do. Thank God for doctors, thank God for nurse practitioners, thank God for medicine, but I want you to know the reason why it hasn't worked yet is because God wanted to get the credit and the glory. Bring Abel up here, bring him, bring him, bring him. Bringing, bringing, bringing. Just in case you thought it was a game. I said, just in case you thought it was a game. The last time he was on this platform, he had an oxygen tank. Now, he's on a platform. I don't see any strings. He's swimming with no oxygen he's swimming with no oxygen you need to believe the word of the lord somebody somebody god can do it
is Abel. For those who don't know, his name is Abel. I just needed the devil to see what we said. Son of man, can these bones? He was dependent on oxygen. This week he was swimming without oxygen. Do you know what a slap in the face that is to the devil when a baby who needed oxygen tanks is underwater and doesn't need oxygen? You can't use oxygen underwater unless you a fish. Do you understand God? God is not just healing. He's making a fool of the devil while he... right now. Stop it. Y'all need to calm down. You calm down. I said calm down. That kind of praise brings a miracle to your road. Stop it. Man of God, I can't, you can't, y'all got to stop. Hey, elders, I don't need that kind of worship breaking up. waiting live. I need you to shout it like you believe it. Say, you shall live. God says in Ezekiel 37 and 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And suddenly, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Suddenly, there was a noise. Freeze. I'm going to have to rewind because they're prophetic. They shouted early. And then when I spoke it, y'all missed it. So let me... So I prophesied as I was commanded by God and as I prophesied, freeze, which means right now I need to start speaking things into the atmosphere. Or a prophet needs to speak into the atmosphere. And while the word is being released, there has to be a noise signifying I agree and a rattling Apostle, come here quickly. Apostle Jonathan Ferguson just happened to come into town. So if someone prophesies while he's speaking, there needs to be a sound of agreement, a suddenly sound, a rattling noise, a peculiar shout. Some of y'all are nervous because y'all didn't come for change. You came for a show. The show has been over. We interrupt this service to bring you the Holy Ghost. As the word of God is released, somebody needs to respond. 
with a shout. Come on, raise it. I speak over your mind. I speak over your finances. I command the standard of God to be raised. I command every enemy against your life, against your assignment, against your inheritance, against your legacy. I break its power. I break its power. I break its power. You shout for a breaking in here. No, you ain't shouting. Shout till you feel it break in your belly. Ah! Break that thing. Break that generational curse. This shall be a house of vision. This shall be a house of the supernatural. I break every binder from your mind. I remove every scale off your eyes. I lift the veil off your heart. I command the devil that closed your eye to be rebuked. I command that witch that looks into this congregation. I command that warlock. I command that demonic power. I command that magic to be broken. I command that Pluto to be broken. I need some warriors. I can't fight for you. You gotta open your mouth and fight for yourself. That demon's coming off your money. That demon's coming off your business. That demon's coming off your dreams. That demon's coming off your night. That demon's coming off your husband. That devil's coming off your wife. That demon's coming off your children. That demon is coming off this city. Now you shouted for you, but I hear the Holy Ghost say, shout for your city. I call Greenville, Jericho. I mark Greenville in the spirit as Jericho. And when you shout, that wall is coming down. That stronghold is coming down. That demonic fortress, down, down, down. Give them a hell. You know my voice. You heard me when I was fasting. You recognize my rank. I command you to bow. You will be compliant. You will bow your knee. Bow, 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 bow. Every spiritual blindness that causes people to look at this service as just normal church. I break the blindness. I break the blindness. If you go crazy, God said a crazy miracle for crazy praisers. I feel the heavens are about to open. I feel somebody is about to get a straightening up of their spine. God's about to put you in your right mind. That devil told you it's over. But that devil lied. We shut the mouth of the liar. Let God be true. By the power of two, a matter is established. As the pastor in this house, I ratify this was the word of the Lord. And when a prophet speaks, we need to respond. And I believe that was the word of the Lord as of 12, 22 p.m. It breaks in your favor. It breaks in your favor. It breaks in your favor. I just need 100 people to get out of your seat and into the aisle and give God a breakthrough praise.
Th this is what I heard the Lord say. Because you have to be dry, very dry bones to not feel the anointing. And the good news is, even if you were very dry, you're about to live today. And one thing I know, when mantles like this are set up by God, there are witches that are positioned in the camp. My mouth never gets dry unless there's a witch. And God told me to tell the witch, if you don't shut your mouth, you're going to choke. Ding dong, the witch is dead. You shout like you go to church. I need you to shout like you up in the kingdom. Listen. Wait, 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 wait. He does not know. He does not know that security told me two weeks ago that there were witches on campus casting spells and they drove them off the campus. They were casting spells. We don't know who they are. It doesn't matter who they are. But I need you to understand that some devil wants to stop what God wants to do. And when he finishes, there's a word in here. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to this word. But do witches really think you're going to stop what the Holy Ghost wants to do? You're messing with the wrong church. You're messing with the wrong people. And messing with the wrong Jesus. Come on, put a tongue in the atmosphere. That a silence every witch. Come on, raise your voice. Put your unknown language. I hear the Lord saying, foreign anointings, foreign languages for foreign anointings. Watch this. Listen, what's about to happen in this atmosphere? Because this man's voice, God has raised up to literally hit nations. And God told me just from here, and something I have to say, but he said, as you pray in that other language, hear me as a man of God. Hear me as a man of God, because if you do not have that language as of yet, you will have in the next 30 seconds. I don't care whatever syllables come to you. She's getting filled right now. She's getting filled right now. And as it is with her, so shall it be for you. Acts 2, and this promise is to you and your children. And it's to many as who are called. I decree you the call. And I pull you into the birthing of the kingdom. Listen. Lift your hands really high. There's such a grace in here. There's such a cloud in here. Yeah. I have to prophesy to her. Can I prophesy to her? Tisha Campbell, can you send her? Can you stand up? God said today I answer the prayers of the maid servant in your family. People have no idea how you got to where you were. But the world didn't raise you. So the world won't be able to take you. For they have blocked Oscars from you. They have blocked awards from you. But God said, no, today the Lord your God shall move you into a new inheritance. There are three contracts pending before you that God shall cause you to step into. And if you fund the kingdom, God says, what they offer shall be but a tithe of what I'm sending after. You better shout. Don't give that lazy shout. I said, lift your voice. It'll be a tithe 
of what was taken. <laughs> so 10 times what they took. And it shall be, and it shall be. If you are a visitor, this is not the time to leave. I'm so tired of us putting a time limit on God when we really don't have anything to do this afternoon. And if you do, I don't mean any disrespect to you. If you have to go to work, I understand. But I'm gonna finish this word. But the word must have demonstration or we just had a gathering without the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody it's in the bones. Hey Tam, it's in the bones. Everything that's been held up, everything that was taken, it has to come back to you now. 10 times over, it's in the bones. Does anybody notice it's been raining a lot around here? Do y'all know why? It's, it's not a weather pattern. We're hitting up against something in the atmosphere. Daniel prayed and fasted 21 days. The angel showed up and said, you, God heard you the first time, but I was detained by the prince over the region until Michael, that warring angel that you don't want to mess with, showed up and broke the atmosphere. Please hear me. We are here, Relentless Church, exists for a purpose bigger than your wildest imagination. And I'm getting ready to tell you that before we declare what shall be, we must first acknowledge what is. We are in Greenville, South Carolina, a city of 60,000 people in the Greenville proper area. 250,000 in the county, 5 million in the state. Why did God call this church into being? What is Relentless Church? Why is Relentless Church? And who is Relentless Church? The what? What is Relentless Church? We are an answer to a request from heaven. Isaiah 6 and 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am. Send us. I need you to hear me. We did not come to this church for a career move. We don't believe in that. We believe in listening to the Holy Ghost. I need you to understand what God thinks of the region. Oh, help me. Me and Pastor Aventer were in Houston, Texas, a city of six million people. The gross domestic product of the city is bigger than the state of South Carolina. I'm saying that to give you a context for what God is doing. Why was I there five years, five the number of grace, grace period? Why did God train us at the highest levels of ministry in the largest church in America and then send us to a city with 1% of the population of the place we came from because he wants to multiply it a hundredfold. Some of y'all don't even know why you moved. Some of y'all have recently moved. You didn't know why God was positioning you for the move that's coming. 
Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I need somebody to hear this in the spirit. If I were you, I'd be right here. I wouldn't go anywhere. I don't care what they say. Ooh, Charlotte, girl. Ooh, you need to go to Atlanta. There's a move of God happening right in the middle. Did anybody hear what I said? How many people drove more than 45 minutes to get here today? How many people drove more than an hour? Anybody drive more than two? Who drove between two and three hours? Anybody drive four hours? I need y'all to see. People don't drive four hours to play games. They drive four hours for a move of God. I need somebody to understand what's being unlocked in the region. Leadership is not about what you have. It's about what you see. God asked me what I see. Can these bones live? Relentless Church was established off the backbone of another church, Redemption Church, the great apostle Ron Carpenter and Pastor Hope Carpenter. The challenge is will people connect to the new move while honoring the first move without dishonoring the next move? There are people who were upset. Why would you change the name? I didn't change the name. Pastor Ron took redemption and they're in California. We had to change the name because redemption still exists. That's why redemption had to become relentless. Because once you are redeemed, you got to run after souls like you've lost your mind. Is there anybody that understands we are the next evolutionary step in the kingdom? I got a key. God said, who will go to Greenville for us? Some people wouldn't go to Greenville because they only see a building. We came because we saw the region. We have vision because we understand that the church is not supposed to be the place you visit two hours a week on Sunday. The church is supposed to have economic impact over a region. Do you know that Fortune 500 companies are about to move here because we're here? Did you know Amazon is coming? I'm prophesying and they missed it. They sitting there, you know, really? I said Amazon is coming. I don't know how, but they gonna play this tape when they do. Multi-billion dollar corporations God's going to whisper to them, and they're going to come into the region. Did you know that the glory of God can attract folk that ain't even thinking about God? Why do you think they're doing all this construction? It's because we need more space for all the cars that are... I told you to hold your offering until I told you the vision. Son of man, can these bones live? Prophesy. So let me prophesy about what Relentless Church is and shall be. We are a multi-generational, multi-denominational, multicultural kingdom of Holy Ghost-filled believers. And I am a preacher who will preach the uncompromising gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not here for your entertainment. Bring it down. I need them to hear this. I'm not here to entertain you. I don't need you to validate me. I am not insecure. I know who I am. Any pastor that needs his church to validate him has already lost because he will submit to the will of people over the will of God. I don't serve you. I serve God for you. Two 
too many men want the worship to come to them instead of flowing through them back to God. We will lift up Jesus. We will not compromise the word to please a shifting culture. We will break the back of racism in this region. This church will lay down culture and pick up the kingdom. Did you hear what I said? World leaders are coming in these doors. Influencers, cultural influencers in every area of enterprise, entertainment, sports, and politics to the highest levels of office will come in here and receive a word from God. And we can be trusted with the resources that are coming. And I prophesy now that supernatural open doors for businesses, opportunities, I declare that people who are tithers, we will sow micro loans into your small business. Did you hear what I said? We are going to have a halfway house for transitional women who are coming out of abusive relationships so that the women and their children can be covered in a housing unit that is safe, clean, and guard gated with 24-hour Second Amendment men of God. They are armed with the word and they are armed. Play with us if you want to, but I'm not playing with no devils. We're gonna cover our widows, we're gonna cover our orphans, we're gonna cover our veterans, we're covering our elderly, we are gonna meet the needs of this community since I've been pastor on, in May, we have served 1,025 families, 2,745 individuals, 44,672 pounds of food in two months. That's what we're doing with the money. That's what we're doing with tithe and offering, meeting the needs of the house. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Does anybody else want to hear the rest of the vision? Church is not here to entertain you. This is not a concert. This is worship. They are not stars. They are pastors. I need you to hear. And you can stand or sit, whatever you want to do. Because I feel the Holy Ghost too. But you're like, I, I don't know what the... We are here because God sent us. Why is Relentless Church here? God wanted a church that would take the region. I want to, um, okay, you see what, I, they missed it, so I'm going to come over here. We're not here to have church picnics and just be cute. We're here to take territory. I don't want Haywood Road. I want the whole county. I said, I want the whole county. And then I want the state. Then we'll take the region. Mark chapter 5, there's a man with 2,000 demons. Jesus shows up and tells the demons, come out of him. And they start snobbling and begging. Oh, Jesus, please. Blah, 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 blah. What did they ask? Don't send us out of the region. The reason why we've been feeling warfare is because there are demons who know there's some folk with authority that are kicking them out of the region. You don't know this, but your marriage is about to see a level of beauty, romance, and restoration because the principality over this region has to go. The sickness and the depression and the heaviness that's been sitting on you for years is about to leave in the next 24 hours because we're about to kick the principality out of the region. Devils don't mind being cast out of bodies. They do mind being cast out of regions. This church sets a marker the Bible says, 
I who hold the key of David, who opens and no one shuts, shuts and no one opens. I've set before you an open door. Hear me. Jesus said, I have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Are those the keys he had? Did you hear what I said? There are keys to the kingdom. God does not make duplicate keys. If he made duplicates, then Jesus wouldn't have had to get the keys from Satan. God could have just made him new keys. What you don't know and nobody knew is that Greenville is a key to a region. Watch this. The lock is not the door, but it keeps the door open or closed. The lock is small compared to the door. The door is Atlanta. The door is Atlanta. The door is Charlotte. But you know what's in the middle? If you unlock Greenville, you unlock the region. I need a hundred people on this side and 300 on that side to lift up a sound that breaks the ceiling in half. I need somebody to lift up. Break! 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 What is Relentless Church? An answer to a request from heaven. Why is Relentless Church? We are here to take and unlock a region. And then who can be a part of Relentless Church? Matthew 22. Jesus says that the Father invited the nobles to a banquet. And the nobles was like, ugh, I don't want to come to your banquet. I'm not going to attend. The Bible says the king was angry, said to his servants, go out to the highways and hedges. Invite everybody you see, both bad and good. Ooh, that messes with the safe church people who don't want anybody coming in that doesn't wear church clothes. They're nervous when people walk in with tattoos, smelling like cigarette smoke. Oh my gosh, you smell like reefer. Yeah, but you smell like pride. Smoke that. God says, invite everybody. Relentless church is not going to turn anyone away who wants to hear the word of the Lord. I'm not going to compromise the word to please people. You got the wrong one. If you want somebody that's going to be tender and scared, you got the wrong one. I'm going to preach this book. But we're going to love people and let the Holy Ghost do the convicting. But we're going to love everybody. Stay out of folks' business. You got enough stuff you need to deal with. Just love the person next to you. Stop gossiping, texting, and tweeting, and direct messaging, trying to find out who's doing what and sleeping with who. You need to handle your own issue. We are going to keep them doors open for whoever wants to walk in. We're going to disciple them. And there are no overnight projects. If it takes 20 years, we're going to walk with you. Tell somebody it's in the bones. Finally, as a pastor, 
we have had an unhealthy interaction with pastors because pastors in the Western world want glory for themselves. And they use the pulpit to get it. Set themselves up as objects of worship as opposed to being servants of the people. Me and my wife want to serve God, walk out in community with you, the principles of the word, raise our kids, go to the baseball game like tomorrow, eat good food, have balance. We're not going to be speaking in tongues every second of the day. We're going to go to Sky Zone and jump on the trampoline. We're still saved if we wear shorts. If you married, please turn the gospel music off and turn the romantic music on. That's why your marriage is a mess now, because you so saved and you forgot how to slow dance and grab her by her ministry. We will have healthy marriages here. We're going to build strong men here. We're not going to emasculate our men. We're going to have real men, grown men, men that love God. We're going to worship God and eat chicken wings and eat Mountain Dew and watch football games and talk about sports and politics and action movies. And then we're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and we're going to serve the community and we're going to get these kids off the street and the ones that don't have fathers are going to have a covering and we're going to teach folk how to be a man and we're going to love our wives and we're going to raise our kids and we're going to build a healthy community. And our women are going to be on fire for God, walking in power and authority, owning their own businesses, writing books, scripts, stage plays, the top minds in healthcare and finance and education. Folk gonna get married in here. Barren wombs gonna be opened in here in the next 12 months. I declare you will be holding the thing you've been praying for 12 months from today. It is not the job of the pastor to do all the work. Acts chapter 6, the apostles said we need to find people who are trained, who are skilled. Watch this. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now in those days when the number of disciples was multiplying there arose a complaint against the Hellenists, against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. And the 12 apostles summoned the multitude of disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. It's not dishonoring tables. What they were saying is that I've got to get this word. So I need people who will be the hands and feet of Jesus. Therefore, seek out among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, who we may appoint over this business. It's not just men, but it's women as well. We call them the relentless elders. All my elders, stand up. All my relentless elders, stand up. Turn around and let the people see you. Let them see you. I asked them, are they with me in the vision? And these were the ones that said yes. And I declare right now by the power of the Holy Ghost, Whatever is good and pure and integral in me, a double portion goes upon each one of you for the effective work of ministry, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. When you lay hands, I'm laying hands. So the cancer has to go when you put your hands on it. Demons have to leave when you put your hands on them. The job of the pastor is not to bury every person, do every wedding, and do every single thing. My primary function is to pray, preach the word, so that you can be the hands and feet of Jesus. By week seven of this series, you will be challenged to get off the sideline and onto the playing field. Stop coming to church, getting all this word, and doing nothing with it. Nobody wants to clap on that. Everybody in here has a gift, and you're going to use it. I said everybody in here has a gift, and you're going to use it. Did you hear what I said? 
And so, I declare that what is in you will be unlocked. Nobody is allowed to sit there and just take all the word and then not do something with it. God needs you on the playing field. I say God needs you on the playing field. Which God are you speaking of, Pastor John? A God who creates universes with his mouth, but the only thing he put his hand on was you. So now, before we check out, because the enemy has us conditioned that at 1 o'clock, whatever we were doing for God is over, even though he said, remember the Sabbath to keep the whole day holy, but never mind. We've decided that by 1 o'clock, it's normally our time to check out. So I'm challenging you, because before we go, I'm going to give you an opportunity to sow. And this is now for our online family as well. I want to tell you right now, if the Lord has spoken to you to give, prepare what's in your heart to give right now. But before you give, I want you to hear this song. Pastor Anna, prepare. I just need you to take a moment to worship because there is a vision. But it is bigger than what you see. It is a part of something so much more vast. We serve a God who creates universes. But the most precious thing he created was the church. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I need you to look at the screens very quickly. This is where Jesus was speaking to the disciples about Caesarea Philippi. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? The cave that you see by the green trees was a cave where pagans actually did detestable things with animals. Hoping that a pagan god would bless their fertility. And so they did horrible, awful, detestable things in this region. Jesus took his disciples to the worst possible place and said, who do men say that I am? Because the church is not to be built in a safe place. Church needs to get dirty. Church needs to be around the broken, the lost, the hurting. Listen to me. Jesus brought them here because it was believed that that cave was the gate to hell. So when he says, upon this rock, he was talking about the top of that cliff. What he was saying is, I'm gonna build my church with hell under my feet and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. He wasn't just talking about the revelation Peter got, he was talking about the physical foundation that what the devil was trying to build, Jesus was going to build on top of it. <laughs>